Hello everyone, welcome to the video 9 of economic lecture series. I am Dr. Arjun Bopanna of Bangalore IAS Academy. This video is brought to you by Mentors for IAS and Nama KPSC Academy. So in this particular video, we will be talking about government expenditure. So far, we have discussed about government received both revenue and capital receipts, taxations, disinvestments, etc. Now, we will discuss about government expenditure, how the government spends its money. That is what we will be discussing in this particular video. So when we discussed about the introduction, when we gave the introduction to fiscal policy, I told you that expenditure in India currently is classified into two broad headings. One is revenue expenditure. The other one is capital expenditure. So what is revenue expenditure? Any expenditure okay, that does not create, do not create asset or which does not reduce liability. Okay, so such an expenditure is known as revenue expenditure. It should not reduce the government's liability like paying away loan. It is not okay or it should not create any asset whereas capital expenditure is something which creates asset or it reduces liability or which reduces liability see for example expenditures on government uh, employees salaries pensions maintenance of law and order now let's just uh, give some examples of the same so salaries pensions okay given to the government employees maintaining law and order okay then giving subsidies then maintenance okay uh, then uh, expenditure on uh, defense but please remember in defense there are some expenditure where the government spends money on acquisition of equipments for defense so when you acquire equipments for defense it is creating an asset so when in defense so therefore don't get confused so if defense the money is being spent on salaries maintenance etc then it is revenue expenditure but in defense if you are buying an aircraft carrier or you are buying a jet so here it is creating an asset later the government can sell it and get money back so therefore it is an asset so that comes under capital so defense expenditure as far as it is concerned with uh, revenue expenditures like salaries pension of uh, defense employees maintenance etc that comes under revenue expenditure similarly the grants that the central government gives to the states or to other countries also come under revenue expenditure because it is not creating any asset nor it is reducing liabilities law and order right so the money that is spent on law and or all these things maintenance come under revenue expenditure whereas capital expenditure is any expenditure that creates asset or reduce liability now let's say asset so if government spends money on building industries okay or setting up new PSU it is creating an asset or if it is building new roads okay or it is building bridges all these are assets from which the government can earn revenue through tolls etc similarly government spending money okay to reduce its liability let us repaying of loans when government repay backs the loan it has taken the government's liability comes down so such an expenditure is known as capital expenditure so it's very simple revenue and capital expenditure this is how today our uh, budget expenditures are classified so in this uh, one of the major expenditure revenue expenditure is on subsidies so food subsidies and uh, you know fertilizer subsidies etc constitute the largest expenditure in terms of revenue revenue expenditure is concerned but otherwise largest expenditure is repayment of loans also is the expend uh, uh, highest expenditure as we have seen in the graph previously now this is how uh, expenditure are classified since the year 2017 before 2017 expenditures were classified on the basis of plan and non-planned expenditure this is how expenditure were classified before 2017 if you recollect before 2017 we had uh, five-year plans we had five-year plan okay so this five-year plan uh, was uh, 
you know, um, uh, the five-year plan was done by the planning commission. So the planning commission was abolished in the year 2014, which was later replaced with Niti Aayog. So here you have to remember these two points. One is what is this five-year plan and what is this planning commission? So uh, I'll just very briefly talk about this planning commission. So planning commission was the apex body in India as far as planning was concerned. It used to plan for the entire country, keeping certain objectives in mind, the resources that it had and uh, this uh, was every it was it used to plan for every five years so in your ncrt i asked you to read over there you would have read it i'm sure okay so every five years a plan would be devised by the planning commission and it would be implemented for a period of five year plan five years okay so so far we have had 12 five year plan which ended in the year 2017 okay the last plan was between 2012-2017 that is a 12th five-year plan the planning started in 1950 the first plan was from 1950 to 1955 so from then onwards we have had 12 plans five-year plan so the planning commission plans for five years it decides how much money it has to spend on what all um, you know uh, sectors etc now let's say simple example let's say 2000 12 to 2017 so the planning commission will come up with a plan in the year 2012 it will say that i will be spending totally 1000 crores in this 1000 crore i will be sent spending 100 crore on let's say education 100 crore on healthcare 100 crore on building infrastructure so all these expenditures which were incurred in the name of five year plan by the planning commission was known as planned expenditure i'll repeat again all the expenditures that was spent in the name of plan in the name of plan but who will decide this it was decided by the planning commission See, please remember the money used to come from the Consolidated Fund of India, okay, and it was approved by the Parliament, but the decisions were taken by the Planning Commission. So, therefore, it was known as Planned Expenditure. I mean, Planning Commission, the Chairman was Prime Minister and then the Planning Commission decisions were all approved by the government. That's a different matter. But whatever was decided by the five-year plan and was spent was known as Planned Expenditure all other expenditures other expenditures were put under non planned expenditure these were accounted for i mean these are decided by the annual plans or by the government annual plan okay so this is how expenditures were being spent till 2017 so i'll repeat again till 2000 uh, till 2017 expenditures were classified into planned expenditure and non-planned expenditure so what is planned expenditure all the expenditures which were spent in the name of five-year plan okay were called as planned expenditure all the other types of expenditures okay which are called as non-planned expenditure it was assumed that all planned expenditures were capital in nature that means it created assets whereas non planned expenditures could have been could be classified into capital and revenue so this gave rise to three fold classification capital expenditure planned capital expenditure non planned capital expenditure and non planned revenue expenditure see you might be getting a lot of confusion here what is this etc so this is the reason why even the government also decided to do away with it and a very simple uh, classification is now adopted that is revenue and capital expenditure so i would like to explain a little bit about planned and non-planned expenditure and why it was done away with okay. now this uh, planned and non-planned expenditure was introduced in india on the basis of recommendation of sukhmoy chakraborty committee so this was classified the expenditures were therefore classified into your non-planned expenditure and planned expenditure non-planned was revenue and capital expenditure so planned expenditure any expenditure that was spent on five-year plan let's take some examples non-planned revenue expenditure non-planned means it was not part of the five-year plan and revenue expenditure as a definition itself it does not create any asset does not create any asset nor reduce any liability so interest payment on the loans the government has taken expenditure incurred on defense services not on 
equipment please remember this subsidies grants given to the states union territories pension social service health care education uh, you know social security etc police uh, economic services that the government offers like agriculture industry power uh, science and technology whatever economic service the government offers to the public then grants given by the government to foreign government please keep these points in mind these are all revenue expenditures earlier put under non planned revenue expenditure then as i told you there were some non planned expenditure which were capital in nature capital means either it should reduce the liability or it should increase assets so when government spends money on defense equipment or modernization buying uh, you know aircrafts etc similarly loans that were given to the states union territories or public sector companies etc also it created an asset because the government would get interest from that so it created an asset for the government so therefore it was capital expenditure then you had planned expenditure so those which were related to long term socio economic goals as determined the planning process so planning as such we will discuss later i just told you very briefly that plans were five year plans were uh, um, you know determined by the five year uh, planning commission okay the chairman of whom was the prime minister and you had a deputy chairman etc so they used to uh, determine how much resources we have what are the broad objective how much uh, i mean what money how much money we should spend on education healthcare etc what is the target what we need to achieve and they would then in turn give that money to the state government in the form of centrally sponsored scheme okay through centrally sponsored schemes the government would spend money uh, on various sectors and give that money to the state government okay to spend on various sectors so in order to achieve what long term socio economic goal so it was related to specific schemes and projects usually routed through the central ministry to the state government now let's say for example in case of uh, let's say health okay so in health the government of india would come up with a scheme called as national health mission so through the five year plan okay five year uh, plan the government will say that i will spend 100 crore okay for health and for that it will come up with a scheme called as national health mission under the national health mission the government will say that at this 100 crore i will give it to the state government it will share it between all the state government each share will uh, each state will get its share and the sent state government will implement this scheme called as national health mission another example if i uh, try to take uh, your uh, for education okay so government will say that i will spend 100 crore in the 12th five year plan for education for which it will come up with a scheme called as sarva shikshan abhiyan so sarva shikshan abhiyan it will say i will allocate 100 crore and this who will implement it the sarva shikshan abhiyan will not be implemented by the central government directly it will be implemented by the state government for which as a centrally sponsored scheme for which the central government will allocate 100 crore to every state the every state will now implement sarva shikshan abhiyan this is how uh, the uh, expenditures were done in the planned expenditure now coming back to planned expenditure they were related to specific schemes like sarva shikshan abhiyan national health mission uh, jnn urm etc they were routed through central ministries to the state government and this was generally in addition to assistance through central taxes which were determined through finance commission so finance commission would allocate certain amount of tax divis from the divisible pool to the state government i'll explain to you in a while i mean in the later videos what is finance commission in addition to that the central government would spend give money to the state government through centrally sponsored schemes so various centrally sponsored schemes which you would have heard of all these were being funded by the central government that's why it's called a centrally sponsored scheme they were decided earlier by the planning commission and the money that was spent through this channel was put under what was known as planned expenditure this whole classification was uh, having inherent problem let's have a look at it and why it was done away with now for you to understand the problem let me give you a simple example okay with respect to education with respect to education so central government would fund certain um, initiatives to promote education on one hand it would come up with a scheme like sarva shikshan abhiyan okay for which money would be given to the state 
government money would be given to the state government okay for various for building schools teachers etc under which scheme under the sarva section abhyan scheme on the other hand on the other hand the central government also will be running various schools like kendriya vidyalaya navodaya vidyalaya etc or various other educational or universities etc so these don't come under sarva section abhyan or they don't come under centrally sponsored scheme these educational institution will be run by whom it will be run by the central government directly whereas this central sarva section abhyan will be by the state government so i hope you are getting the difference so the same central government will be spending money on education one through sarva section abhyan the other directly through its department now the problem arises here the problem is that the money is now getting divided between two schemes to achieve the same objective the objective is to increase education standards in our country but on one hand you are spending money on sarva section abhyan and then you are spending money to the kendriya vidyalaya and navodaya vidyalaya so here uh this expenditure on kendriya vidyalaya navodaya vidyalaya teachers the teachers expenditure salary etc of kendriya vidyalaya they came under revenue non planned expenditure whereas the money on teachers who were hired under sarva shikshan abhiyan came under planned expenditure see the difference here so the money i'll repeat again the money that was being spent for the salaries of teachers under sarva shikshan abhiyan came under planned expenditure because they were being spent through central sponsored schemes whereas the teachers expenditures like salary pensions of the kendriya vidyalaya came under the revenue non planned expenditure same teacher so so same teachers salaries if they were under sarva shikshan it was called as planned expenditure if it was through direct Uh, kendriya vidyalaya they were called as non planned revenue expenditure see the confusion over here another example i will tell you now let's take health so government of india you know comes up with a scheme called as national health mission which will be implemented by the states the state government will hire doctors okay under the national health mission same way the central government also will have various institutions let's say aims so under the aims various doctors will be hired now the salaries of doctors under national health mission came under the planned expenditure because they were being spent under the centrally sponsored scheme whereas the doctor salary of the aims institution they came under the non planned revenue expenditure see the confusion here so the expenditures were unscientifically divided okay which had no meaning so government was spending same kind of resources but in different headings okay so that is why the confusion started to arise okay and uh, another problem was that building a bridge okay was under the planned whereas its maintenance was under the non planned now let's say the problem let's see the problem from this so the central government will give the state government money to build a bridge good so the state government will build a bridge okay because it came under the planned maintenance was not sponsored by the central government so who had to do the maintenance maintenance has to be done by the state government itself but state was not getting any money because it was not part of the planned expenditure and the state were reluctant to give money on maintenance so bridges were built but they were not maintained this is the problem in india infrastructures are built but they are not maintained because maintenance does not come under the planned expenditure and the most important maintenance gets affected so roads beautiful roads are built but after 2 3 years potholes starts appearing because they are not maintained because no maintenance come under non planned expenditure and they were not given importance so this is the problems that the government started to see between the bifurcation of planned and non planned expenditures because of these problem and because of the overall doing away with the concept of five year plans and planning commission itself the government did not have to worry about this kind of classification and changed all this planned and non planned classification into simple revenue and capital expenditure 
So before that, this uh, we'll just again re uh, recap what we have discussed. The classification gave rise to misleading notion that planned expenditure is developmental, non-planned is non-developmental. Like building bridge was considered planned and it was developmental. Whereas maintenance was considered non-planned and it was considered non-development. So therefore it led to neglect of items such as maintenance, etc. It also led to acute shortage of regular cadre stuff because most of the money was being spent on schemes which hired contract labor regular character staff started to get affected the bifurcation also contributed to fragmentation of available resources in our example we saw that the money for education was being spent on two different schemes one was through centrally sponsored schemes that is through your service section of Yan. the other was through regular cadre schools that is Navodhya Vidyalaya and Kendriya Vidyalayas so this gave rise to the fragmentation of the available resources now the money was less but it had to be spent to two different uh, ex uh, two different schemes then uh, the government set up this committee, okay, Rangarajan panel, which uh, uh, observed the following uh, weaknesses of this planned and non-planned. It said that uh, this led to fragmented view of resource allocation, okay, so making it difficult to ascertain the cost of delivery of services because see, healthcare you are spending on two different schemes, education you are spending on different schemes, etc. So we could not ascertain the cost of delivery of services and also we could not link with outlay and outcome, how much money we are spending that is outlay and what is the benefit we are actually getting could not be actually determined. So therefore, it also uh, it also observed that uh, the uh, there was neglect of essential uh, non-planned revenue expenditures like maintenance. So therefore, assets were being built, but they were not being maintained. Uh, so it recommended that you provide an appropriate budgetary frame, uh, framework, just simply focusing on revenue and capital expenditure. So led to the uh, doing away with the concept of planned and non-planned expenditure and today in india we follow revenue expenditure and capital expenditure you can pause the video here and see the difference so as i already told you anything that is incurred by the government which does not create any asset or does not reduce liability is known as revenue expenditure so these are usually incurred in the normal functioning of the government day-to-day -day functioning like paying salaries maintenance law and order etc day-to-day functioning whereas this is mainly for acquisition of capital it does not create any asset whereas capital it creates asset it is recurring in nature keeps happening you have to keep paying salaries you have to keep paying pensions you have to keep giving subsidies so therefore it is recurring in nature whereas capital expenditure is is non-recurring in nature and uh, revenue expenditure uh, is short period expenditure okay whereas capital expenditure is long period expenditure now ex imagine a uh, building a road so it is not happening in one or two days okay it's a long term expenditure 10 years etc so it has got a long gestational period example is expenditure on medicines and salaries and doctors etc example is building of hospitals so this is capital and revenue expenditure difference so please keep these things in mind so one of the major expenditures okay one of the major so now you have understood expenditures can be salaries pensions okay maintenance law and order building assets okay buying equip uh, buying equipments uh, repayment of uh, loans okay all these are different types of expenditure one of the major expenditure is your subsidy so in the next video we will discuss subsidies what is subsidies why do we need subsidies what are merits and non-merit subsidies what is the challenges or issues relating to subsidy uh, sec uh, subsidies in india and how do we reform it and what the government is doing to reform the subsidies so if we complete subsidies that will complete our entire budget discussion that is income and expenditure of the government uh, now let's just solve some uh, question relating to what we have discussed today okay with reference to so uh, with reference to union budget uh, which of the following are covered under non-planned expenditure non-planned expenditure again what is non-planned those expenditure which are incurred not through five-year plan so defense expenditure i told you defense expenditure is non-planned expenditure if it is dealing with the acquisition of assets then it is capital expenditure otherwise it is revenue expenditure but either ways it is non-planned expenditure then interest payment that is also non-planned salaries 
and pension that's also one and subsidies that is also non plan so all the four option c okay so question like this can be asked in your examination um from your mains point of view you also have to analyze okay why uh, planned and non planned was done away with uh, uh, and uh, currently we adopt revenue and capital expenditure this is both at the central level as well as the state level okay so such kind of analytical question can be asked in your mains also so i will end our uh, this video with uh, uh, over here i hope uh, these videos are useful please like and share okay if you need any um, uh, if you have any doubts please uh, do write in the comment section i will reply to them thank you so much and have a good day